But what I want to do is I'm going to introduce somebody up here to speak to all of you and give you some hard facts about what truly went on over here, over there in Harney County. Uh, thanks to all of you that came over here from Harney County, but we have an individual with us today that's been very instrumental in trying to spread this word. He's been he's been attacked not physically but verbally in every way possible by locals and people from out of the area. But this guy, four years ago, I was up in the Sylvie's country right out of Harney County hunting with my two sons. And as I come up a draw, I run into this old cowboy on a horse with his dogs looking for cattle, trying to observe the law that is laid down by the BLM to get his cattle off of there in time. Well, him and I exchanged a few words, had, had a, a cup of coffee and talked, and we developed a friendship. Then this thing pops up over here in eastern Oregon over to Harney County, and which has strengthened the friendship. We're back into the love thy brother. So Tom's going to come up here. His name is Tom Davis. We're going to get him up here. And Tom's going to put some facts on you guys about really what happened, about the fear that was put in the people over there and how it was put there. None of the, the fake media. This We're getting to where it's boots on the ground time here, people. Um, all the, polls, the political stuff is very important. But to truly be able to spread this word, you need the facts about how the treatment of the people over there really were. So at this time, we're going to turn it over to Tom Davis. Um, first of all, this is to Kate Brown and Loretta Lynch. This is to Kate Brown and Loretta Lynch. Loretta Lynch said in a report up here in Portland that essentially the ha Bundys, Ammon and them, would commit a crime. So they got to take care of the situation peacefully. We're here celebrating a life of a man that was taken care of peacefully. Loretta Lynch put a warrant for a man's death. In her own words, it never committed a crime. There was no search warrant. The refuge was notified four days before the Bundys took over the refuge by the sheriff's office and the FBI. They had four days to send all their people home on vacation. So there was no hazard of employees being harassed. Employee manager, Crush, went down there the day before the takeover and opened the doors and left his personal key rings for the refuge on the desk in the office. So the Bundys went, was welcoming. It's a law and it's known fact. If your doors are open, keys are on the display, open display, that it is not trespassing. So they did not trespass on the refuge. Also, the sheriff, David Ward, called Linda at the Narrows and told Linda there was a convoy of guys coming down. Do not, do not call 911. Reason being, once 911 was called, it put it in the jurisdiction of the county. When they got on the refuge, it put it in the jurisdiction of the federal and Dave could turn it over to the feds. So these are some impacts that's coming out by Chris himself, the manager. And that. now this manager of the refuge, if you guys really want to know who he is, the Hammonds can ch tell you who he is. Him and his wife, his wife is in charge of the Andrews district of the BLM. Those are the ones that pressed the second charges against the Hammonds and took them to court the second time. And, uh, and resentenced them to jail. The judge involved in this case and her two illustrious sons or whatever they are that has us removed the Hammonds from the refuge campaign are donating $100,000 to the Burns Paiute people that they've collected to help the Burns Paiute people. She herself, is, uh, the, in 1995 they created a law signed by the governor, not a law, it was an act, so we didn't get a chance to vote on it that every time a judge sentenced somebody to prison, they get money into their retirement. They don't get cash directly, but it goes to their retirement. So when they retire, they've got a bootload of money by how many people they got into prison. The Hammonds were sent to a prison called Abrax. Abrax Canal Prison Systems, down in California. Also goes to Geo World. Geo World is a youth prison system for young boys, which is having some problems in Pennsylvania because of pedophilia. Owned by, goes back to the Masons. This all goes back to Masons. But anyways, every time they send a prisoner down, the judges make money through the federal prison system. So that's some of the stuff we're digging up. 
is a lot of this stuff, Hammonds was set up by the curses, which is the managers. They want their ranch because their ranch is directly between the refuge and the Steens Mountain. Perfect corridor between the two. Steens Mountain now, since it's a cow free zone for five years, is an overgrowth and a timber fire hazard that is going to be a matchbox. It's going to destroy our Steens Mountain. And that fire will not stop until it gets to the Snake River over in Idaho. It's going to take off and burn that national monument they're trying to create in Mulher County that's going to remove 350, 400 ranches from their land. And that's 2.5 million acres. Everybody know what 2.5 million acres look like? Those ranchers are going to be removed from their land. Their cattle is going to be removed. And it's going to be another fire hazard. So you're going to have a potential tinderbox that's going to destroy all our country. Our country. It belongs to all of us. It belongs to us as Oregon citizens and as a treasure of Oregon. Harney County should be managing it along with the state of Oregon that we all can enjoy it. These people that we seen the other day, I think some of them might still be over there. Our land, private public land, no, no grazing. Whenever I buy a ranch, if I buy the ranch, I buy the grazing rights too to that grass. I am a, owning that grass, everything above. The government, through that process, owns the minerals and down below, BLM. So this here, that public grazing on, you know, private grazing on public land, is garbage. We own that land. We own all the grass on that land, and it's ours as ranchers. So that's a misnomer that the government is spreading welfare ranchers. We pay for grazing fees. Yeah, we might pay a dollar seventy-five an AUM. In that country, one cow will graze on 50 to 60 acres for one AUM, animal unit month. So we're not really getting no great deal everybody's making out to be. And that you've got to maintain water, you've got to maintain your land, the grasses, and your cattle are the, you guys all have lawn mowers. What do you do with your lawn mower? You take it out and cut your grass. That's what the cows are, is the lawn mower. It's a tool to maintain the grass. And that we got to maintain the fences. Any of you ever ride a 50 mile round? You ride 50 miles, you're fixing fences because of elk, crossing your fences, destroying your fences. You see a herd of a 2,000 head of elk go through a fence, a mile of fence wasted, devastated. So, this free welfare ranching crap that I'm hearing, excuse my language, is garbage. It's a lot of money. A uh, roll of wire for a quarter mile costs 79 bucks. A uh, steel post costs 650. One quarter mile of fence, four strands of wire, and that four times 79. Steel post, you got 40 to 50 steel posts in a quarter, square mile, in a quarter mile. And then you got your quarters, you got to put in your panels. A panel, a wooden post costs 10, 12 bucks. So it's a lot of money that the ranchers are putting out to maintain this land so people can come hunting. And that if it wasn't for the ranchers, you would not have your elk and deer because the ranchers are providing feed, water. You know how many elk comes down on my hay stack a year? And I don't get no free meat off of them? I'm feeding them. Riley Valley had this year 2,500 elk hanging in the valley. Now we have deer that come down. We're feeding them. They're eating off our, heart, our hay stacks and our fields. But we don't get no compensation from the government. And everybody keeps saying free welfare ranchers crud in that. And it's not. It's our land and it's all of our land. We maintain the land so you guys can enjoy it when you come hunting. I have people come over to hunt and that and I tell them where the elk is. Well, I've seen a couple of nice bulls over here. They go get themselves a bull. Eventually I'll find a bottle of whiskey on my pickup seat when I get back to my pickup. <laughs> yeah, it's trade goods. I don't drink, but it's trade goods. I can trade a lot of stuff for a bottle of penalty. <laughs> but, so, you know, it's a cooperation between all of us as people, as a family. I'd love to see people coming over. But the worst people I see is environmentalists, birders. Birders are people come over and watch for birds. They show up. I've had them trespassing in my house. When I was in town, come home and they're in there drinking coffee. Thinking my house was an abandoned house and they can do whatever they want. I've had, I, one story, I had a guy out of Portland. Him and his party come down there having a hunt party. Set up a camp. I was just a couple miles from the refuge where I live, on the sod house. And they had their fire ring. They had garbage strewn all over the place. And I come and go, what's this, guys? Oh, we're camping. This is 
public ground. I said, no, it's not. It's my private ground. I pay 100% taxes on it. And that, you know, and they go, well, okay. And they packed up and left the garbage and we took off. And I got their license plate. And I ran a DV and I got their name. I brought their garbage and their fire ring and I set it up in their yard in Portland. <laughs> This is back in the 80s and talked to me. And I told him what happened. He says, Okay, he said, gave that guy a lecture and came over and talked to me. He said, Can I come hunt on your place? <laughs> and I said, Yeah, sure, come down. And me and him's friends now. But, you know, this is the mentality of a lot of these city people. They come down and think their place is anywhere. They don't pay taxes on our roads. They drive around our county. We pay taxes on it. They say the government pays taxes. Government gives us 25% of the tax base. Government owns in Harney County 4.5 million acres. They're paying 25%. I've got to pay 100% on my land. I don't get no 25% cut or 75% cut. And people's got to understand that we do pay a lot of money for this land. And that when people come down to respect our land, because this is our county land, it's our state land, it's our land, but we've got the base is us that takes care of this land. And we welcome everybody in Harney County, even though the people in Harney County at the courthouse, which actually was paid BLM people that came down to protest against the militia, are saying go home. No, everybody's welcome in Harney County. We welcome everybody, we love you all, and we thank you very much, and God bless the Hammond family. Lisa said God bless you guys. Shauna said God bless you guys this morning. Carol loves you guys, and thank you all for the prayers. And Jeanette, she's a fantastic, lovely woman. And she thanks you from the bottom of her heart for all that we're doing to support her family and her husband. So God bless you guys. Drive safe and be watchful. And let's take this government back from politicians like Jan Brown. Thank you.